Waves carry energy as they propagate. When this sinking wave travels, the elastic potential energy and the kinetic energy of the sinking winds travel with the wave. For sinusoidal waves, the motion of the sinking wind is like a simple harmonic motion. If you remember, the total mechanical energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is E equals to the kinetic energy K plus the potential energy U. And uh, at the end point, there's only one half Kx squared. And at the end point, the X is the amplitude. This means uh, for the same medium, the same K, the energy carried by a simple harmonic oscillator is proportional to the amplitude squared. Now let's look at this one-dimensional slinky wave. As the wave travels, it stays along one straight line. It does not spread out. So if there is no friction or air resistance to take energy away, the amplitude of the wave would stay the same as the wave travels. This is true for both transverse and the longitudinal waves like these. What if we have a circular wave? For example, if I throw a rock into a pond, I would get a circular wave traveling outward from where the rock hits the water. This circular wave would spread out to bigger and bigger circles as it propagates. The same amount of energy has to be spread out onto a smaller circumference 2 pi r when the wave gets here, and onto a bigger circumference 2 pi r when the wave gets there. This means that even if no energy is lost to friction and air resistance, the amplitude of the wave would still decrease as the wave propagates outward. For three-dimensional waves, we often talk about this thing called intensity. We use capital I for intensity. It is defined as energy per unit time divided by area. The energy produced by a wave source per second divided by the area onto which the energy spread. The energy transferred per unit time is also the power P. So intensity is power per area. What do you think is the unit for intensity? Since it's power per area, it is uh, watts per meter squared. And of course, watts is also joules per second. Because the energy E of a wave is proportional to the amplitude squared, that means uh, the intensity, which is proportional to the energy, is proportional to the amplitude squared. For three-dimensional waves produced by a point wave source, such as the sound wave produced by this bell, the waves would travel outward in spheres. It's called spherical waves. As the waves propagate outward, its energy spreads out onto bigger and bigger spherical surfaces. So for a spherical wave, a three-dimensional wave produced by a point source, the intensity I, power divided by area, would be power divided by the area of spheres which is 4 pi r squared. So for the same power, and the 4 pi of course is constant, this intensity would be proportional to 1 over r squared. Since the intensity is also proportional to the amplitude squared, and it is proportional to 1 over r squared, that means uh, I can take square root on both sides. The amplitude is proportional to 1 over r. So. For spherical waves, the intensity is proportional to amplitude squared, proportional to 1 over r squared, and the amplitude is proportional to 1 over r. Now let's try this problem. The sound wave produced by the base of an upright vacuum cleaner 2 meters away has an amplitude of a naught and an intensity of i naught. What would the amplitude and sound intensity be 0.5 meter away from the base? We can say that this sound wave is a spherical wave. So the intensity is proportional to 1 over r squared, and the amplitude is proportional to 1 over r. The distance r changes from 2 meters to 0.5 meters. 
which means the distance changes by a factor of uh, one fourth. So the intensity, which is proportional to one over r squared, changes by a factor of one over one fourth squared, which is sixteen. So the intensity the child would hear would be sixteen times the i naught. So it's not surprising if a little kid dislikes loud vacuum sound. The amplitude is proportional to one over r, which means it changes by a factor of one over one fourth. So it is four. So the amplitude 0.5 meters away should be four times the a naught.